Hey everyone, it's Mike Reinold from MikeReinold.com and I'm super excited to share this quick video with you. I just wanted to show you some of the details behind our brand new online platform that we're using for our rehabilitation protocols. So over the years, you guys probably know, but myself and Kevin Wilk and Dr. James Andrews, one of the things that we've, we've really taken a lot of pride in in our careers was how detailed and comprehensive our rehabilitation protocols are. Um, and we do this because one, you know, we follow these protocols. These are the things that, that we use every day in our clinics to, to assure that people are rehabilitating in a timely fashion and really progressing as safe, but also as fast as they can. So we're big believers in the rehabilitation protocol concept. And, and the way we've developed ours is, is really based on a few, a few key concepts for me is one is we've done a ton of this internal research ourselves. So EMG studies on what's the best exercise to perform. We've done biomechanical studies showing the different loads on tissues during different exercises and ranges of motion. Uh, we've done basic science studies on, on just the healing and, and the properties of the tissues after surgeries. So we've kind of done a bunch of this research ourselves, but we also take all of our scientific knowledge of just the basic understanding of tissue healing, and we put that together with our decades of research. And, and, and our decades of experience. And, and really what we've done is we've, we've rehabilitated to just thousands of people in, in all these different categories. So we've created these, these, these very detailed comprehensive protocols that are now all online. You can download them, you can view them. And, and I, I just wanted to just show you real quick some of these here. So again, this is kind of some of our newly revised and expanded protocol. So we sat down, we, we went through all of our protocols and we've updated them for you. So they're current. This is exactly what we're doing in our clinics now. You know, we do this every few years to make sure that we're, you know, we're staying on top of, of all the latest research. Uh, we've expanded them to include even more surgeries. So as new surgical techniques and preferences from the surgeons come out, we want to stay on top of that. And we've even included things like more hip protocols this time. So we have like hip scopes and stuff like that. So, you know, for you, if, if, if you're ever kind of wondering, you know, you know, what exactly you should be doing, what's the time frames you should be following? What, what exactly do you do week six after a slap repair, for example, that, that type of thing, we've got all these listed out for you. So again, this is, this is our collection of protocols. There's, there's over 175. I think we're at 177 right now. And it covers our post-operative, our pre-operative even, some non-operative rehab programs for, for just injuries like lateral epicondylitis and hamstring strains, but all of our ha exercise handouts like our Throwers 10, our Fundamental Shoulder Program, and all of our interval return to sports. So throwing, tennis, golf, heck, there's javelin. There's so many things in here. Running, there, there's so many things. But most importantly, they're now completely all online. So that's what we're pretty excited about. So we've revised them, we've expanded them, and we've put them online. Super excited about this. So you can view them. I want to show you how that, that looks in this platform. You can download them, you can print them, you can use them in your clinic every day. So I'm in the platform right now. I'm going to click and I'm just going to go into the actual course. Um, and I say course, but it's actually just these rehab protocols. But I want to get into the platform so you can see these. So I'm going to click to access the protocols, and you'll see we have a very simple page. This page is going to look good on your computer, on your tablet, and even on your iPhone. But it's a very simple page outlined this way, so it's nice and easy for you to just use your finger to click on the screen and access these protocols. Okay, so you can see, you know, we have a huge list. We have all these these this, these comprehensive protocols and all these different things. But let's take a peek at the ACL one. I think that's a good example. So let's look at ACL reconstruction. We'll use our accelerated approach using just a patellar tendon autograph. That's kind of our, our gold standard probably for ACLs. But when you click on that, here's what happens. You get taken to the screen where you actually get to see your protocol, right? So from here, I can save it. I can print it. I can just view it. I can view it on my phone and just kind of check in to see where I'm at. But when you go through our protocols, this is one of our more comprehensive ones, I want, to, I want to just show you some of the details of these protocols. So with the ACL protocol, we start this preoperatively because we think the pre-op phase is pretty important when somebody has an injury to their ACL, right? We want to reduce the swelling, we want to get their range of motion back because the better they look going into the surgery, the better they look coming out of the surgery, right? So pre-op is actually one of the things we actually do a decent amount with our ACL reconstruction, so wanted to include this in the protocol, okay? But really Really, it's not just how these, these, these protocols are built based on time. I wanted to show you the different phases that we have here. So we start with the preoperative phase, but you can see we have five total phases. We go to the immediate postoperative phase, which is just the first week. You know, So the first week has its own phase that's a couple of pages long. It's pretty detailed. 
into our early rehab phase where we start getting a little bit out of damage control and a little bit more into restoring the basics, you know, the first month or so. And then eventually we get to our progressive strengthening and neuromuscular control phase, right? This is where we start building. So week four to week 10. And then we get to two more phases, our advanced activity phase, which gets us out to about the fourth month. And then finally our return to activity phase. So if that's a sport, that's, that's, your, that's your phase for this. Okay, so it, when, when you look at it, we, we really have these big chunks, these five phases. We base them on time because this is an initial post-operative procedure, right? This is a surgical procedure. We have to base them on time because there's certain healing tissue qualities that we have to follow, right? We don't want to go too fast for the graft site as well as the, the, the new ligament that's in place. So there are definitively some time-based uh, restrictions here, but it's not just that. All of our phases have goals. So if you look at the immediate post-op phase here this first week, we have these goals. We want to restore full passive knee extension. We want to diminish joint swelling and pain. We want to restore patellar mobility, gradually improve knee flexion, reestablish quad control, and restore some independent gait. Right, so th those are our goals. So you know, by the end of day seven, by the end of week one, you wanna you wanna start getting to these goals. You wanna make sure that you're hitting these goals. So yes, there's a time restriction to that, or I shouldn't say restriction, but there's a, a time guideline to that. But there's also some goals that we wanna make sure that you hit, and I, and I think that's that's pretty important. Once we get past the the early phases here, you actually start to see that. We not only have these goals, but now what we have is we have criteria to progress to the next phase. And that's an important concept with our protocols. We have a goal for each phase, and then we have our criteria to progress. Okay, so even if you've done great, even if it's seven days post-op, if you haven't hit these goals, you're not ready for phase two. Right, so you have to have some good quad control, right? You have to be able to form a good quad set and straight leg raise. You have to have full passive knee extension. You have to have at least 90 degrees of passive range of flexion, right? You have to have good patellar mobility, minimal effusion. You got to be walking around well. If you haven't met these criteria, you have to stay in this first phase. And what you're going to find now is you're going to start getting behind. So again, there's two things with the time frames. One, it's, it's about saying, hey, you shouldn't go faster than this because you might overload the healing tissue. But two is, hey, if you're starting to fall, fall behind, you, you need to pick up the pace a little bit. You need to assure that they're, they're meeting these, these goals. Okay, because once you get behind, it gets real easy to stay behind, right? So a few things, you know, maybe the patient's not doing their homework as instructed, right? Maybe they're not compliant with their home exercises. Maybe you need to increase the frequency of their physical therapy early on and sacrifice some of your later visits to assure that they kind of click into place. I think that's a, a common one that I do, right? Or maybe you need to be a little bit more aggressive, right? So this is where it comes into play, especially with young clinicians, it kind of helps tell you like, okay, when should I push and when shouldn't I push, right? Like, all right, well, they're getting a little bit behind in their range of motion. Maybe I should start pushing a little bit harder, for example. Okay, so all of our, all of our, our phases um, have these goals and then criteria to progress. And that's, that's really an important one for me. You can see that this criteria kind of gets bigger and bigger as we move on, right? So we have about five goals here, but uh, excuse me, criteria here. But to, adv to enter this advanced phase, you can see we're getting pretty specific here. We want specific amounts of range of motion. We want specific percentages of strength, right? Um, you know, and there's so many different things that you can put in here. Some functional tests, some subjective knee scoring. It's okay if you don't have access to all these things. You might not have a KT machine. You might not have an isokinetic machine. You might not have the ability to do, you know, hop tests or subjective scorings. It's okay. We wanted to be comprehensive so that way you had access to all these things and you knew when we did them. And then you use your best judgment and, and you use your, your clinical skills and preferences, right? If you don't have an isokinetic machine, that's fine, but you should probably still do a manual muscle test or maybe even use a handheld dynamometer in that phase, right? Does that make sense? When we look at each of the phases too, one thing I wanted to kind of you know point out is how detailed each phase is, right? So we'll go back to this first week, this first phase. So we have the goals. On post-operative day one, we tell you exactly what should you be doing with the brace? What should you be doing for weight bearing? What exact exercises do we do, right? So keep that in mind. These are the exercises that we do. You might have a slightly different approach, but if the, if the exercises you choose are not in line with the exercises that we're laying out, you have to really question that and say, okay, am I sticking to the goals and am I, am I gonna assure that I get this, this next criteria to progress with the exercises I select? 
right? So we'll have we'll have some restrictions in there, so things you can and can't do. We'll have some passive range of motion guidelines, right? So you can see that we want you know knee flexion to 90 degrees by day five, and maybe 100 degrees by day seven, right? So you, we're having really strict guidelines to 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 help you say this is exactly what we need. Those are important, okay? Again, we list out the exercises. You can see a variety of exercises we perform, but really what it comes down to is really when do you start loading, right? So it's, it's when do you start adding some weight to this? When do you start doing some little things? So you can see here in this phase, you know, start a progressive resistant exercise program. Start with one pound, progress about one pound per week, right? Things like that. So you actually know when to start loading and which week and, and really assure that you're, you're, you're putting this, this patient in a very gradual progression. Right, and then obviously there's more advanced things. Right, when do you start running? When do you start a pool program if you have one? When do you start doing a, an anti-gravity treadmill if you have one? See, I mean, this is how comprehensive we have. You know, if you don't have that, that's okay. But you just that you're not ready for a, a normal treadmill at that point. You know, when do you start doing leg press? When do you start doing plyometric leg presses and jumping? Right, when do you start your return to sport program? So we have all this stuff in here. You can see how detailed these 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 protocols are. You know, we've done you know years of research and we've we've tested these we tweak these all the time and make major revisions every few years or so so that way you're always getting really what's 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 right right current for what we're doing in our clinics so you can see here in this acl protocol it's pretty detailed you see all the different components and all the different phases you know we have this basically for all these different protocols that we have throughout so hopefully that helps. Hopefully you guys understand a little bit of the online platform and you see what goes into our protocols. You see how advanced they can get. And uh, hopefully the, uh, if you need guidance or if you, you feel like you, 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 you want somebody to kind of advise you and make sure that you're, you're rehabilitating at the, the pr appropriate progression with your patients, then I think these protocols are really going to help a ton.